Hey everyone, it's Jensen. Today is Wednesday, September 30th, and from an update on Ohio voting to last night's presidential debate, I have all the stories you need to know to get in the loop today. But first, let's get a look at the latest coronavirus data from the state. Today, there were 1,080 new cases of coronavirus compared to the 21-day average of 1,001. There were 21 deaths reported in the last 24 hours, 103 new hospitalizations compared to the 21-day average of just 68, so quite a jump there. And there were 14 new ICU admissions compared to 11. Now let's talk about money. Ohio's minimum wage is set to jump on January 1st to $8.80 per hour for non-tipped employees and $4.40 for tipped employees. Right now, minimum wage here in Ohio is at $8.70 and $4.35 per hour, so a 10 cent and a 5 cent jump respectively. Ohioans voted in 2006 to increase the state's minimum wage yearly by the rate of inflation, so there you go. Start checking those paychecks January 1st. And turning more toward election news, requesting an absentee ballot by fax or email is still off limits in Ohio. A three-judge panel of Ohio's 10th District Court of Appeals ruled that a trial judge's order requiring Secretary of State Frank LaRose to allow the applications by fax or email could weigh down county election boards and pose a security risk. The court made its decision, quote, because of the unrebutted compelling evidence of harm to third parties and the great public interest in preserving the security of Ohio's 2020 general election. The decision returns the case to Franklin County Common Pleas Judge Stephen McIntosh's court, where a trial could proceed and an appeal is also possible. The appellate court also said Democrats showed only that Ohio election law allows electronic submissions, not that they can be required. So with less than five weeks until election day, its decision was a win for the Trump campaign, the Republican National Committee, and other GOP committees that had joined LaRosa's side in that lawsuit. And since we're on the topic, Here's a reminder, Ohio voters must submit an absentee ballot application by noon, October 31st, but LaRose has repeatedly said to not wait that long. In fact, he says get that in by October 27th. So that's more of a realistic deadline, and based on yesterday's decision, county election boards will continue to accept completed applications only by mail or in person. And while that's staying the same for now, there is something new happening this election, which will give Ohio voters even more information on election night. Because of the large number of absentee ballot request forms already received by the state, LaRose is emphasizing that unlike in years past, the projected results might not be known the night of November 3rd because there could be a lot of ballots that legally arrive by mail to county boards of elections after election night. Mail-in ballots must be postmarked by November 2nd or earlier to count. A ballot could be postmarked by the November 2nd deadline, but not received by election day on November 3rd. Ballots are allowed to be counted for up to 10 days after election day as long as they have that postmark of November 2nd or earlier. Results are then officially certified and reported on November 24th. That is nothing new. LaRose said he will be upgrading the Secretary of State website so the potentially large number of outstanding absentee ballots will be clear clearly visible on election night. He said reporting the number of outstanding absentee ballots is designed to make it abundantly clear if one candidate has defeated another or if more counting is needed to determine that winner. And to put it lightly, last night's presidential debate in Cleveland was a whirlwind. And because of that, the Commission on Presidential Debates is saying it's adding new tools to maintain order to the other upcoming debates. The Nonpartisan Commission has organized every general election presidential debate since 1988. And in a statement, the Commission said the first debate made clear that additional structure should be added to the format of the remaining debates to ensure a more orderly discussion of issues. And the commission says it's carefully considering the changes that we'll adopt and will announce those measures shortly. And if you miss the debate, we have a recap online as well as fact checking by our Verify team. And I have those links ready for you in the description of those videos. So check that out. But looking locally, Bowling Green police are searching for a specialized bike that was stolen from a disabled person last night. The bike, a top-end accelerator XLT Junior hand cycle, was taken from the 100 block of Bile Ave. Police say the flag wasn't on the bike at the time it was stolen, and that three male suspects you'll see on your screen also entered several other vehicles and stole 
other items that night. Anyone with information on this should call the Bowling Green Police Department at 419-352-1131. But before I go, let's look at another fun story. I'm realizing all my fun stories are space themed lately and today is no different. I'm a nerd, okay? A flash that lit up the skies in Ohio and Pennsylvania at like four o'clock this morning was most likely a meteor. The American Meteor Society received more than 200 reports of a bright fireball over the eastern part of the state. Robert Lunsford, a society official, said it only takes an object the size of a softball to create a flash that's as bright as the full moon. And he said this object was probably a bit larger than that, but he did admit that more analysis is needed to determine its exact size. And even ODOT captured the flash on its traffic cameras. How cool is that? Wish I could have seen it, but that's way past my bedtime. But that is all I have for you today. If you like this video, hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. I'm Jensen, and now you are in the loop.